Hello, it's Rebecca and today is another book review day and I have been reading 100 Ways for a Dog to Train Its Human by Simon Whaley. I think that's how you pronounce it. I do apologise if I've got it wrong. This is just a small book that I picked up when I was at Norgfest a couple of months back. So it's just a tiny little thing but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. So I will read you the blurb and then talk to you about the book. Humans think we are pack animals looking for a leader. Don't fall for it. Find out how to get your humans running their lives around you. On days out to the beach, always be the first in the family to get out of the car onto the beach and into the sea. Always be the last in the family to get out of the sea onto the beach and into the car. Remember to shake excess sea water from your fur once you are inside the car. Humans may refrain from passing you food to test. To them, a piece of salmon, followed by licorice all sorts, a cake and a selection of vegetables, is a foul combination. Humans believe meals should be categorised into three sections, a starter, a main, coarse and a sweet. Disavow them this. Food is food is food. Always make sure you have more energy at the end of a walk than you did at the beginning. Believe me, humans love the futility of taking you for a walk to tire you out. So I picked this up, like I say, at Norgfest because it looked funny and as a dog owner, dogs do really annoying, frustrating things and you think, why are you doing that? And this book is written to dogs and when I bought the book, he insisted on signing it or, or dedicating it to the dog. So he signed it to Lily. And I thought it was going to be really funny and really clever and really getting inside the head of a dog and I was sorely disappointed. I'd read a few bits and flicked through when I was at the festival and just thought, because it was, it was fairly cheap, it was something like three pounds or something, I can't remember, and thought, yeah, that's, that's great. And if any of you have a dog or even any sort of pet, you realise how much your life does change and that the animal then becomes the centre of your life and the reason for your existence and everything you do eventually comes back to your pet. The money that you make goes on buying them food and paying for vet bills and the time that you have off is used to take them out for walks and play with them and all these other things which you know when you, when you get a pet that these things will have to happen. And as an animal owner we all know that they have their own little personalities and their own ways of doing things and they're just great to have around. I wouldn't be without my dog at all no matter how much she annoys me and drives me mad and farts in my face in the mornings. Yeah this morning I woke up to a green cloud of smell in front of my face. I, I wouldn't be without her and she's absolutely amazing and I thought this would be quite a funny little thing about how dogs manage to manipulate their owners and do what they want and train their owners to do as the animals want rather than what the humans want and I found it really unfunny and I was really sad when I when I put it down because I thought it would be quite clever it seems very middle class which I didn't like there were a lot of things that I didn't associate with because I'm not middle class, I'm working class, I don't have a lot of money, I don't have fancy things, I know I have a lot of things and that's why I don't have any money because they go on all the things but it just it seemed rather middle class and I didn't like that, I didn't like how it wasn't broad enough to span all social levels or anything like that, it, it just it felt very very insular for a certain type of person which I didn't like and there were things that just weren't funny it didn't didn't strike a chord like here's one encourage your humans to prefer self-catering holidays they'll be more likely to take you with them instead of putting you in a kennel I don't know if that's supposed to be funny or or what it's supposed to be it didn't it, it, just things that didn't kind of sit right. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Never put a dirty toy in your mouth. You don't know which human has been playing with it. Insist that all your toys are washed regularly in the washing machine and then pegged on the line to dry. Enjoy playing with your clean toy when it is dry. A good time to do this is often immediately after you've eaten your dinner. I don't know, maybe my sense of humour just isn't in line with this. 
but it just it feels really kind of stunted and I don't know animals are mad and you can really just watching an animal for five minutes what they do and what they look at and the, just the strange things that they get up to you can really write funny funny things about animals and this wasn't it there was only one bit that I fully related to with my dog but still it still was a little bit off humans believe that you have exceptional hearing you have the ability to hear high-pitched whistles that they can't train them though into realizing that you have different hearing ignore them completely when they are standing next to you and shout stay yet always go running when you hear them opening a packet of biscuits two miles away that is so true i could be standing in front of my dog and talking to her and she's just like but as soon as you open the fridge and get some cheese out there she is she's right there right behind you or some chicken she's right there behind you but the rest of it 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 just it didn't it didn't feel like it was written by a dog owner and I don't know whether or not he is a dog owner but uh, yeah I'm I'm really torn because like I say it could have been funny and it wasn't and it could have been interesting and it wasn't it just missed the mark in so many places and yeah like I say I'm sad because I do like reading things about dogs and I do like talking to people or reading things where the dogs do strange and odd things and behave really bizarrely and all that kind of stuff and like I say yeah I, I expected this to be funny and it wasn't maybe it appeals to your sense of humour I'm not saying don't read it I was just very very disappointed with this and it's such a small little book and it'll go on my shelf and get hidden by some other things but yeah sorry I didn't like it so if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews then please subscribe I put new videos out every time I've read a book I occasionally do other bits of bookish writerly type things on here so if you're interested in any of that then please subscribe and I will see you soon have a good day bye bye